Hey team, we're gonna learn how to automatically optimize all of the media on your site for performance, including all of your images and video using the Cloudinary WordPress plugin. I'm Colby Fayok. And if this is your first time here, make sure you click subscribe and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. WordPress is a wildly popular open source website builder that allows you to do a lot of powerful things to build websites, including installing plugins to really take that up to another level, along with pre-built themes or even build your own themes. Now themes are a really great thing and why WordPress is popular in the first place, but it locks you down to building it all in one infrastructure. So you have your website and your website server that's going to both host WordPress and the site that's coming out of it. So instead we can use WP GraphQL, which will allow us to put a GraphQL interface in front of our WordPress instance so that we can query it headlessly and we can build our application front end with whatever tools we want. Now, regardless of if you are querying it headlessly or if you are just using WordPress out of the box, one of the issues with websites generally, especially when people managing it are non-technical, is you have a lot of media, including your images and videos, that end up not being optimized, which can severely hurt the performance of your application. For instance, on even my blog, I have a lot of images so people can have some context as to what exactly is going on as we're working through a tutorial. And if we start to see how that actually impacts our network request, we can see that while I am loading my images currently through Cloudinary, we can see that those will start to add up, especially if these images are uncompressed, meaning they can be huge sizes if they aren't optimized already. So to solve this, we can use Cloudinary, which is a media platform, which has a ton of features from media management to delivery, but we're gonna focus on the delivery part, where first of all, we can put our images behind Cloudinary's powerful CDN, and on top of that, we can use its media API to automatically optimize all of our images and serve them in modern formats. Particularly, we're going to use the Cloudinary WordPress plugin, where just with a simple install inside of our dashboard, we're going to be able to sync all of our assets and automatically serve them from Cloudinary with our automatic optimization. Now to see how this works, I went ahead and uninstalled the Cloudinary plugin from my spacejelly.dev website, but that way we can see it on a real actual WordPress instance that's being used for my production site. So if we head over to plugins, we can see that I no longer have Cloudinary in this list, so I'm currently not automatically optimizing my media using Cloudinary. But all I need to do is head over to the add new button, or I can do that right inside of the sidebar, where once the plugins page loads, I can start to search for Cloudinary by entering it in the search plugins. I'm gonna add Cloudinary. And once it loads, we can see that I have in this first slot, the official Cloudinary plugin where I can install it. And once it's finished installing, I can also click activate where now we can see that my plugin is inactive. And specifically, if we scroll down inside of our sidebar, or if you don't have as many tabs as me, it might be a little bit higher, but we can now see that we have this Cloudinary section and we also have a notification next to it. So now if we click this, we can see that we load up the setup page for Cloudinary, where if you don't have an account yet, you're going to need a free Cloudinary account. So you can sign up right on cloudinary.com or you can use the sign up link right inside of the dashboard, but we can hit next, where next we're going to need to add our Cloudinary connection string so that the plugin knows which Cloudinary account to associate these images with. So to find this, if I head over into my Cloudinary account, we can see that I have my cloud name, my API key, and my API secret, but particularly what we want is this API environment variable value. So I'm gonna head over to the right here where we can see this copy button, and I'm gonna go ahead and click it and copy it. Alternatively, you can view it by clicking this little I where you get that full string available. But now back inside of WordPress, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in, and we can immediately see on the right here that we're trying to connect to our account to make sure it's valid. And we can see that it's successfully connected. So now we can click next, which is going to take us to our configuration page. Now, if you know what you're doing, or if you wanna read through all of this, you can go ahead and see how you want to configure your plugin. But specifically, if you want to have all the optimization possible on your media and how it's getting loaded, you wanna just leave the, all these on by default, which I'm going to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. But once that's done setting up, we can see that we get our success and our confetti. So now we can go to the plugin dashboard. But once this page loads, we can see that we now can have a percentage of how many assets are currently optimized. Now what's gonna happen in the background is Cloudinary is going to sync all the assets to Cloudinary so that once all of them are synced, we'll then have them available to access inside of our requests. If we head over to the media section in our WordPress dashboard, we can actually see that where we now have this Cloudinary column, and we also see these little icons that represent whether or not it has been synced. And since we have this yellow icon here, that means that these assets have yet to be synced and they're getting uploaded currently to Cloudinary. 
But as time goes on, we're gonna see this percentage rise, meaning our assets have been uploaded to Cloudinary and they have been optimized. But once that hits 100%, we're gonna be ready to go. Now my site isn't finished syncing yet, but we can start to see how this is working. If I head over to the WP GraphQL tab, and if I open that up, we're gonna get our query composer, which allows us to actually query our data in real time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click query composer because I don't know the exact query to write by hand. But if I start to look through all my data, I'm gonna go ahead and start looking at the posts. So if I click posts and I start to add my edges, my node, and I scroll down and I start to add the content and maybe even the featured image, because we want to make sure that all of our images are optimized, right? So I can select the source URL for that image, and then I can click play. And we can start to see once that query loads, what the data is going to look like. Now I'm going to go ahead and click X on the query composer so we can sit, see a little easier and I'll make this temporarily a little bit bigger. But if we start to look through our content where if you're not familiar with querying it headlessly, one of the better options right now is just to grab it as an HTML string for the body of all the posts and the pages. But if we start to look through it, we can start finding our images where let's see here. If I go down far enough, I'm going to find my figure. We find the image tag. We even see that we have a loading of lazy on it, which is going to help our images load in a lazy pattern which is going to help performance, especially for images that are way down on the page. But we can see the source attribute now where we are successfully loading that image from Cloudinary. Now, I'm not going to go through and try to pick out every single image tag in this string, but if we scroll past the content and we get down to our featured image. Now, I personally don't use featured images currently on spacejelly.dev, so I added one to my post as an example, but we can see that the featured image is included in those optimizations, and we can see that my image is now being served from Cloudinary. Now, one thing that's interesting on top of it being served from Cloudinary is the parameters that we add. And this is our programmable media API, where we can add these parameters right inside of the URL, where specifically we're saying we want to automatically determine what format to serve, and we want to automatically determine what quality to serve. Now, let me open this up in a new tab so we can see what that means. Now, if we start to refresh the page and actually look at the network request for this and try to inspect it, we can see that this GIF is being served actually as a WebP. And we can see that even though it is a GIF, it is being served a little bit heavy at one megabyte. So I could probably use video instead of a GIF and be a little bit more performant. But let's still focus on what we're doing with this image, where the reason it's not being served as a GIF and instead of WebP is because we're specifying this format of auto, which it's saying that we want to use the best format to determine what's the best way to serve this image. Now to see the difference, if I open this up in a new tab and let me open up my network tab and I remove this format of auto, I open up my network tab and I hit enter on here, we can see that as soon as this loads, we can see that first of all, it's 0.8 megabytes bigger than it was before. But if we actually start to inspect the request, we can see that it's that original GIF and we were able to optimize it just due to the format by serving it as a WebP. The cool thing, better yet, is if I wanted to serve this as an MP4, I can add back that format and I can add an underscore and specify as MP4 so that I can get a video. And once I actually load that up, we can see that on the fly, Cloudinary changed that GIF into an MP4. And if we look at the size, it's so much smaller because we were using a video. So this is why a lot of times it's actually a lot more performant to use video instead of a GIF inside of your page. But I think we got on a little bit of a tangent there. So let's come back to WordPress, where this automatic optimization is happening to all of our images, all our GIFs, and all of our media that's being added to our page. But instead of just seeing this inside of the query, let's actually see this inside of an application. And again, while I probably could just have it deployed to spacejelly.dev, let's actually use another application so you can see that I'm not just doing something on the side. Where I'm going to use my Next.js WordPress starter, where this is going to allow us to really easily spin up a Next.js WordPress site using our headless instance. So I'm going to copy the command for yarn create next app with my starter. I'm going to paste it in my terminal and add an additional attribute of my Cloudary WP. And what that's going to do is it's going to clone down that Next.js project that I have created. It's going to install all the dependencies and get us already set up for moving forward with our new project. And once it's done, we can now CD into that new directory where we have one more thing and we need to add that environment variable. So I'm going to open up my code editor. We're inside. I'm going to create a new file at the root of the project and I'm going to call that file .env.local. Now back on the GitHub for my Next.js WordPress starter, I'm going to go ahead and copy this WordPress GraphQL endpoint, paste it inside of my env.local, 
I'm going to also copy my WordPress domain as my endpoint with WP GraphQL by default will be that domain slash GraphQL. And I'm gonna go ahead and update that value inside of my environment variable file. But now I can run Yarn Dev inside of my terminal. And once it loads, we can see that I have a brand new WordPress site and it's pulling in all of my spacejelly.dev tutorials. Now we're more interested in the media though, right? So as we can see this page loading and I go to an actual post, we can see that as I scroll down, first of all, the images are lazy loaded. So they're not gonna load until I get down to a section close to that image. But we can see once the page loads, it's going to be served from Cloudinary and it's being served as an AVIF where because I'm in Chrome, AVIF is supported, so that's going to be the best file type for this particular image that can be served. And we can see that the image is going to be much smaller than the original that was uploaded, meaning it's going to be quicker for it to load and more performant for my visitors. And as I scroll down through the rest of the images on my page, we can see they're all loaded that way. They're all loaded from Cloudinary and they all have that automated performance optimizations so that we can make sure we're delivering the best experience we can for our visitors. Media performance, including images and video, are a huge part of any website or application because you're impacting the performance and the experience that you're giving for your visitors. If it's just a personal blog, maybe you're making it slower for somebody, especially if they're on a mobile phone. If you're an e-commerce store, an online store, you're going to hurt your conversion rate if you don't have your images and media served as fast as you can. While the automatic media optimization worked really well with WP GraphQL, what's your favorite WordPress plugin for working with headless WordPress? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about how you can enhance your headless WordPress experience, you can check out my other video, Yoast SEO and Headless WordPress, where we can show you how to actually manage and query your SEO data inside of WordPress with WP GraphQL for a Next.js application. Or if you want to take these querying a step further and actually transform your static HTML into something more, such as creating a dynamic table of contents inside of your HTML, check out my video, Adding a Dynamic Table of Contents to Static HTML using Next.js and React with Rehype. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.